how dismantling patriarchy opens the door to big government. Yeah, I've been talking about this for a while. <laughs> I've been talking about this for a long fucking time, you know? But of course, women are all about instant gratification in the here and now. Their critical thinking skills are not as good as men's. So they're not as good at predicting the future, seeing the most possible future outcomes of their current beliefs and actions, which is why they're supposed to have men in their lives to begin with to counter their emotionality. Remove demands, logic, reason, critical thinking from the equation, and then put women in charge. Well, it's a fucking shit show, as we've seen. Anyway, before I get to this story, I'd like to ask those of you out there who like and appreciate the raw, red pill nature of my content to please consider going and checking out my website, therealistphilosopher.com. That is therealistphilosopher.com, and consider making a donation. There's three ways you can donate. One, Bitcoin. Two, Cash App. Or three, my Patreon, which is a per-piece platform. I make about eight pieces a month. It's a subscription-style platform, so you donate a buck a month, that's like eight bucks a month. You donate 50 cents, four bucks a month. Any amount is greatly appreciated, as is any level of support. You also get a nice, some nice extra perks. Some perks if you donate, which one of those perks is direct contact with myself whenever you need to speak to me. So go check that out, therealistphilosopher.com. That is therealistphilosopher.com. I could really use your help. Okay, so how dismantling patriarchy opens the door to big government. So, modern feminists tell us patriarchy oppresses women, meaning men being in charge. So, of course, their answer is to put women in charge. Wouldn't that mean that men would now be oppressed? Sure, but, you know, two wrongs make a right, right? They say women should be free from needing male protection and financial support. Well, but first of all, to not need male protection, wouldn't women need to be as strong as men? And wouldn't they also need to work as hard and have as much human capital, which they generally don't? Uh, wouldn't they also need to be freed from having children? Because, you know, pregnancy is a biological fact. And when you're pregnant, you're not too good at protecting yourself or creating wealth, earning resources, as it were, because you've got to take care of a kid. Ah, well, we'll fix that with abortion. Ah. <laughs> and, of course, we'll try to teach men that being male is toxic and evil and will make the men so weak that they can't protect the women, which also means they can't protect themselves and they can't protect the nation, which leaves us wide open to invasion and takeover from hostile forces. Not a good thing. Anyway, instead, women should pursue careers. Yeah, how's that working out for us in the West? Have casual sex. Yeah, feel no pressure to marry and take care of themselves. Eh. Radical individualism. The other half of the coin of cultural deconstructivism. On one side you have collectivism, and on the other side you have radical individualism. Both are tools for deconstructing Western society. Sadly, modern feminism not only harms women, but it also goes hand in hand with calls for more government control. Well, of course. <laughs> oh, the power required to make all of these monumental changes means that you have to have a very large government, a very powerful government. Dismantling patriarchy leaves women vulnerable and demands for social socialism increase as a result. Well, of course, because if women, men are no longer taking care of women, then the government has to do so. So without patriarchal men, women turn to government. Yeah. Uh, they have nobody else to take care of them. I mean, it's still men taking care of the women, but, uh, you know, it's the government stealing from the men to then give to the women instead of the men giving the money directly to the women. And, of course, in the process, the government gets their cut <laughs> and justifies their larger, more powerful existence. The rotten fruit of feminism's message that women can be fully independent and don't need men is all around us. Marriage rates are at historic lows. Thank God. How are things going to change if men don't stop denying women their resources? Women now hold more jobs than men in the U.S. workforce. Single motherhood has reached alarming levels. Meanwhile, we're also seeing a massive uptick in young women's support for socialism. But why is this? By the way, America is now the number one country for single parents. <laughs> number one. Feminism demanded that men stop being protectors and providers. Why? 
Oh, because women, they're equal to men. They're just as strong as men. That's the implication. And a lot of feminists, by the way, teach that women are just as strong as men. And this idea that men are stronger than women, that's a myth. That's a social construct. That's interesting. One of you ladies out there who thinks you're so strong, come have an arm wrestling contest with me. I'm old and fat, and I'll still probably beat you. Oh, yeah, but you're stronger. Mm. Yeah. I made the harmful idea that women can do it all alone, which they can't. Many women now are in the role of provider themselves. Oh, boy. They bear full responsibility for child rearing and are expected to work full time all without a man. Well, how is that possible? How can that happen? Well, it can't without loads and loads of government assistance, which is funded largely by men. <laughs> I don't need no man. I'm getting me $75,000 in benefits from the government, which is subsidized by men. <laughs> in a society where women can't expect male support, a massive government safety net looks appealing. Mm -hmm. It is kind of appealing. When you paint men as the enemy, and then you paint it as a horrible and evil lot in life to have to depend on them. And then you offer this very appealing alternative. Oh, look, if you take this, you take option B, option A being men, you don't need to have men in your life anymore except for when you're horny or lonely. And then you can do everything on your own. But you're really not. <laughs> it's all just an illusion. Socialism promises to help. With its shiny promises of guaranteed income for all, <laughs> free state-run child care, free education, free health care, and more, it's no mystery why the majority of women left adrift by a feminist culture say they'd prefer to live in a socialist country than in a capitalist one. In a society where women can't expect male support, a massive government safety net surely looks appealing. Not only are they told they can't expect male support, but they're told it's preferable not to have it. You don't want to have a man in your life. They're so domineering and controlling. If he's the one supporting you, you have no freedoms. Lies, <laughs> of course. Uh, but, you know, there are lies that are conducive to the left's narrative. By the way, this is all cultural Marxism. All cultural Marxism. This is all Marxism, period. Let me tell you a little bit about Marx, okay? Marx understood pragmatically, that you couldn't have 100% of people not working. It just wasn't possible. So Marx's idea, Marx's solution, was that half the population would work and slave away, while the other half had leisure. To him, that was the best solution you could get. And of course, who would have the leisure? The special people, the artists and celebrities. And of course, with cultural Marxism, the people that will have the leisure are the waymen. But by and large, the people who are getting paid off are the useful idiots who are supporting this. <laughs> oh, and the poor suckers like you and me are paying for it, meaning the men. Yeah. Meanwhile, the majority of men say they would prefer to live in a capitalist country. Well, of course. They're the ones paying for everything. <laughs> Having freedom and accountability and be responsible for your own actions and responsible for yourself and your own productive capability to support you. Of course, that's what we want because... That's what we have. Nobody's taking care of us. <laughs> Nobody's going to take care of us. And if you think that in some kind of socialist utopia, you guys are going to be taken care of, thank the fuck again, okay? Why? The difference is clear. Women have a natural desire to be provided for, while men have a natural desire to provide. Capitalism allows men to earn for themselves. Socialism promises to provide. This is also based in biology, by the way. Throughout human history, the women have stayed home, stayed in the cave, stayed in the hut, stayed in the, the house and taken care of the children while the men went out and hunted and provided the resources. That's how it's been. So whether it be a man providing those or government, women have always been used to being provided for. Okay? And if you give them two options and say option A is unpalatable, it's horrible. It's evil. If you take option A, you'll have no freedom. You'll be miserable. You can't rely on option A. If you take option B, you have total freedom, and you don't have to rely on anybody except yourself. It's just you. You have total freedom. Well, which one are you going to choose? Well, you're going to choose B. <laughs> I mean, it's not good for your long-term well-being and happiness, but you've been told it is because option A is men, and you've been told that men are horrible and evil and oppressive and that marriage and, you know, a committed relationship is a ball and chain. I mean, you sold these messages, of course you're going to choose socialism. 
Of course, you're going to choose socialism over man. They, and they both serve the same function. But one is being sold to you as freedom, and the other is being sold to you as slavery, when actually the opposite is the truth. <laughs> the man is the freedom, and the socialism is the slavery. But you don't know it. And once you find it out, it's too late. You're already a slave. You're a slave right now. So capitalism allows men to earn for themselves while socialism promises to provide. And women are used to being provided for on a biological level. So, of course, they opt for socialism. Of course, socialism doesn't actually fulfill its promise. Instead, it opens the doors to poverty, violence, and bread lines. Yeah, but again, by then it's too late and you have no power. The government's so big, they have all the power, they have all the guns, and you are powerless and a slave. By the way, it's very interesting to me how the left is supposedly against slavery, yet socialism creates the very thing that they say they are most against. So interesting. Patriarchy liberates women. As much as feminists may not like to admit it, women are more liberated under a culture of patriarchy where men are in charge, a system in which men feel a duty to protect and provide. Makes sense to me. Being cared for by a man may also temper the desire for a socialist government. Yes, but you see, if you've never been in that situation, in a positive sense, you wouldn't know it. See, here's the thing. Feminism poisons everything. Marxism poisons everything. It sends you into this situation that even if you decide to get into it as horrible and evil and oppressive and exploitive as you've been taught it is, if you do get into that situation, choose to marry a man, get into a monogamous relationship, have kids with him, the feminism taints it all. It taints it all. It creates all of this confirmation, bias, the ideology itself. Something happens, a little Rolodex in your head clicks to, you know, card number 367, male oppression of me. I'm being oppressed. <laughs> Just everything you see, do, 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 is feminism. You see, you, you, you see oppression everywhere. You see exploitation everywhere, even where it doesn't exist, especially where it doesn't exist. So it poisons, it taints the entire relationship, makes it impossible for it to be a success. So even if you get into a relationship where you might be able to learn the truth about how being in a monogamous relationship with a good man most contributes to your well-being and happiness, the feminism, the feminism poisons it from the get-go, and you'll never be able to find out the truth. The traditional model is not just a social construct either. Of course not. This is a mistake that people make. They don't seem to realize that for thousands and thousands of years, just as human beings have been evolving, so has the traditional relationship between men and women. It's not just some accident that some dude pulled out of a hat or just arbitrarily decided that this is how things ought to be. Yeah. The grand poobah monkey at some point decided, <laughs> Yeah, yeah, or we're going to have monkey patriarchy, and everybody's going to live in this way and do that. Oh, it's just some kind of arbitrary construct he just pulled out of his ass. And then humans evolved and stuck to that for some reason that nobody can explain. No, because it's the best, most logical, reasoned approach to relationships between men and women. It's not just something that somebody dreamed up to oppress women. That's absurd. Women and children rely on men for protection and resources out of sheer biological need, right? Because men and women are not equal. Human beings, not just men, human beings in general, are flawed and easily corruptible beings. So you need somebody who can protect you. The roles are split up for a reason, because the woman isn't well suited to protection, which is why women don't belong in the military, except as fucking nurses and maybe cooks far from the front fucking line, because they fight for shit. Oh, look at the MMA. Let's talk about extreme exceptions to the motherfucking rule, who are, by the way, fighting other women. <laughs> Spare me the bullshit about Ronda Rousey, okay? I would kick her motherfucking ass. Spare me this bullshit, okay? About how women are so much better and tougher and stronger than men, or they're equal at least to men, and they could do the same job as a man. It's bullshit, okay? The biological reality is men are stronger than women. Men are actually, on average, smarter than women. We're better at certain tasks than women. Women are best suited to raising the child, taking care of the household, and the man is best suited to going out and fucking earning wealth, creating wealth, finding resources. There is a reason that these roles exist, and it's not just some kind of arbitrary social construct designed to favor men. If that was the case, the human species wouldn't have continued to exist. It favored both sexes. And the only people that were oppressed, nobody was oppressed by other sexes. 
Men have not been oppressed by women, by and large, and women have not been oppressed by men. We've all been oppressed by reality. She goes on to say, women are physically weaker, making them more vulnerable to violence and exploitation from bad men. I'm going to object to that because they are vulnerable to violence and exploitation from bad people. Because evil, violence, human depredation, it knows no bounds or sex. None. Women also experience pregnancy, a beautiful and incredible gift. And when we have small children, we're less able to go out and earn lots of money. Correct. And somebody's got to raise that child. Oh no, both parents can go out and then the state can raise the child. That's, as we're finding out, that's not a very good idea. We've got all these useless idiot lemmings running around who can't think for themselves and have no human capital, no useful skills, no ability to create wealth. And at the same time, they've been taught that Mean or evil, patriarchy's bad, relationships are oppressive, and so they don't have very many means to find meaning in their life, so they become bitter, angry, resentful, and they blame the current status quo. Well, of course. Look at the way things are now. Capitalism, which isn't really capitalism, but cronyism. Capitalism and this Western decadence. Oh, it's so evil. Oh, that's, this is why... I'm so unhappy and unfulfilled. We need to tear it down and rebuild from the ground up. Yeah. <laughs> Idiots. <laughs> they don't understand it's their ideology that's making them unhappy, not the current status quo. Although the current status quo has a lot to do with it because that is inculcating this ideology within them via the media and via the educational system. So it goes on to say, patriarchy makes sure we're taken care of during this wonderful yet taxing time so that we can focus on our uniquely feminine gift, the ability to nurture new life. Yeah. And also raise the kids while we go out and earn the resources. But of course, you know, we can't have that. This state has to have control of these kids so it can inculcate within them this socialist, leftist, patriarchy is evil nonsense so that then the Western culture as a whole can be torn down and then rebuilt as a global communist utopia, which has never existed. <laughs> because utopia is not going to come out of socialism or communism. You would think people would have figured that out after about 100 experiments over the past century or so, but no. No, 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 because that wasn't real communism, right? That wasn't real socialism. Yeah, okay. Uh, while a feminist society tells men they no longer must feel a duty to provide for women and children, and of course it tells women that they shouldn't want a man to provide for them, because it's, it's enslaving you. The need for this role doesn't go away. Of course it doesn't. You can't change reality. <laughs> oh, you can't change an is with an ought. Eh, doesn't work that way. Of course, leftists believe it does. They think perception is reality and everything is relative. A vacuum is created, one that's often filled with the calls for a bigger state. Right, because the more people that you turn to a socialist bent, the more people need socialism to support them until you have a government that's so big so overwhelming that it controls everybody's lives and you have no freedom whatsoever. Which seems to be okay for women. <laughs> seems to be okay with them. They don't seem to have a problem with slavery. Hmm. Anyway, let me know what you think in the comment section. And please like and subscribe to my BitChute channel if you have not already. BitChute.com forward slash The Realist Philosopher. And if you really like and appreciate my content, again, please consider making a donation by going to TheRealistPhilosopher.com. That is TheRealistPhilosopher.com. I could really use your help.